Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we're gonna have a look at this InnoVision uh, Voodoo 2, 12 MB. So this card was uh, donated to me and it has some damage. We're gonna look at under the microscope later. But over here are some uh, crushed, bent and missing pin. There's one missing pin here. So there's no point uh, really trying the card in a computer before we have fixed that. So we can see if we actually have something we can work with. We can keep diagnosing it. So I'm gonna try to put on a new pin here and that will require some digging into the side of the ship I've done it before. And uh, we're gonna try to use this conformal coating here to keep the new wire in place to the PCB and later to the ship. I uh, have used other types of conformal coating but uh, they weren't suitable when you were soldering, they were more suitable once you were done. So I hope this will make my life a little bit easier. And then we got our Amtec flux and a syringe, I got a bottle of it. So yeah, let's take a look under the microscope on this card here and see what we're gonna do. So the card is under the microscope here. So this is the FBI ship closest to the PCI port. So we can see the bend pins here. I'm gonna point at them. So here's one. And here is two. And then we got another one slightly bent here, but that's fine. But we got one missing here. So we got a little knob there, we call it. And uh, I think the pad, yeah, the pad is empty. So this is gonna be the real problem is the missing one, but I have done it before. Uh, you can see my Wood 1 and Wood 2 repair videos. I uh, put them in, but I don't think I managed to document them very well because they were quite tricky and uh, yeah, I can't really do everything under the microscope either. It's kind of hard to film small stuff when you have to sometimes manhandling the card a bit. But I think we're gonna start out by just trying to fix the, the most bent pins here to make sure they're not shorting anything or so. I'm just gonna use my knife. I like to use it because it has a little bit of a grip to the pin. So the pin is still not loose from what I can feel. But it's gonna need resoldering just to make sure it doesn't get loose. This one, is it off or is it just me? If that's off, we're gonna notice that when we drag solder this because that's what I want to do now. I just want to go over the pins here to make sure they're actually uh, soldered to the PCB. So I'm gonna turn my iron on here. I actually got a new tip for it, so I probably need to tin that up. So let's add some flux here. See, this new tip here has an angle on it, so like a has like a circle, so I should make drag soldering easier. I figure. So I'm just checking the pins here now. And this one's gonna move a bit because the pad is loose, but we can use that conformal coating to fix it down later. The important thing now is the fact that there is a bond and those two are going apart. Let's see if we can get some focus. 
so they're quite squished but the, uh, as you can see the moving parts I don't think the solder anymore Can't see any shorts here now. There seems to be a room here. Like I said, the pad is loose, it's gonna move. I'm just gonna fix that. This seems fine. Yeah, so it's not gonna look like new, but it looks see here, way better. And uh, we can clearly see there's no shorts. We can also see the broken pin that's missing. So that's the next job to. I actually have to dig out in the ship here to do that. So the next step would be to actually carve out a piece of the epoxy capsule of the ship. Uh, so I can actually get to what's left of the pin because they are basically traces going to the ship. So and uh, red people are using dremels. So I've used a knife and it works quite fine. It takes a few minutes. But uh, you basically have to dig in here. So I'm digging into the ship here. Dug in this way, so I'm going down now. Don't want to go down first, so I damaged the pins next to it and stuff. And the reason for digging in is that it's much easier, I found, to get a good uh, solid joint or something that actually has some surface area. That's enough. I don't uh, think I want to expose too much of this. The ones on the side is gonna make a problem. But anyways, that's our uh, call it a pad on our ship, so we can solder to that. So I would like to mix up some of this conformal coating. And by mix up, I mean thinning it out a little bit. It's quite thick, so tip I. I don't remember if it was Lewis Rossman or Decoder, someone or both of them used alcohol, isopropanol alcohol to tin it out. And that seems to work very well. And makes it easy to hard it all the way through. And also when you're doing really small stuff, it seems to help a lot since it is quite viscous by its, its natural form. So I'm gonna need a very small amount of alcohol here too. See if I can solve that or it's gonna turn into a mess. would like to uh, fix that uh, pad we had loose, uh, cover that up and fix it in place. Because this it this conformal coating is also like a soldering mask, I suppose it's two in one. It might be too thin, I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. But we're dealing with very small things here, so.
sorry there, I forgot to turn on the mic, but uh, we have conformal coated the pins next to the one that was broken. The reason I want to do that is because of the pad that you saw before that was loose next to here. I want that to be in place. Also, the conformal coating is also soldering a mask. Might be called that even this product. But um, it should help us not solder to stuff we don't want to. So it will make it stronger and uh, work as a soldering mask. So it should hopefully make it easier now to get the uh, actual pin on we need here. So it's gonna go from up here to down there. So I'm gonna harden this with UV light now. Basically like so. I'm actually gonna stop recording here and just put the, the lamp over it for like five minutes. I really want this to harden. So we're back and uh, conformal coating should have hardened. Yeah, that's hard. So next job is actually to thin this pad here and make sure this one is scraped up to here because I'm not sure how well I can get all the way in here. Plus I prefer to have more context area just to make sure. We start by scraping a little bit on, on this trace to make it a bigger pad. Think that will do. I'm gonna swap to a smaller, rounder, longer tip. It's not my favorite, but for this thing, it's the best I have. It seems to do good enough of a job. So this is like 0.8, I think this tip. So pretty. You can see how big it is, or maybe it's 1.2. I don't, not sure. But that should take care of that. Yeah, I think that's the best we can do there. Can't get any further in, but there should be enough. Next step would be to actually make uh, the jumper wire for this. So the next step would be to make a jumper wire and this is a piece of uh, wire or cable from a network cable. So this is one of the leads. So we'll cut off insulation. Yeah, this is one of the like wires that makes up a pair and this one has multiple strands inside I don't know how thick they are or diameter they are but uh, yeah you might think they're small now but uh, they get pretty big when you're trying to replace something on the card so let's cut off the rest so end up with one and I'm gonna thin that one with some uh, Leaded solder. So next job is to try to bend it into something that resembles the original leg. I found that to be the easier way, and then try to bend it in once we got it in place. Uh, so yeah, so it's a little bit of a guesswork on uh, where to bend it. So I think this might work. So I'm just gonna cut off from the excess. So I have a uh, cap on type down this piece here. It's uh, just enough to have it lying where I want it. So the idea is to solder it to the PCB here and uh, cut it off somewhere around here. 
and then conformal code in place. So we can then start this thing here. So we'll add some flux. Try to use a knife to keep it where I want it. Seems to be there. Let's hope so. So the goal now is to try to cut it off. And while doing that, I need to get the hold of the other end. clean it up without breaking it well, it seems to be there hopefully I have enough on top now it looks a bit short it's overlapping a little bit but not by much but I might be able to adjust that well I think that should work once we get some solder on there so next up is some conformal coating here, I mixed up a new batch. And then time for some UV hardening. I also got to uh, think there was someone on Lewis Rossman's stream who said uh, hot air works well to help. The conformal coating has hardened. So the last thing to do here now is to solder the other end into place. Hopefully the conformal coating does what it's supposed to and holds the pin in place because it's gonna melt in the other end too. So without any anything that holds it in place this is quite difficult to do otherwise. And if this doesn't work with my tip I might go in with some hot air. I think I tried both, I don't remember what worked best. might be there already that was it this was the easiest one I've done in terms of doing that end because usually the other end comes loose for one reason or the other well, I think it's there it uh, doesn't move so that's a good thing like it did before. I don't I mean if I push it too hard it's just gonna break off and that's not the point. So yeah I think we're gonna try it with this now and then if this works we just uh, we will come form a coat. Uh, let's see here. Mm. 
we will conform we'll cut this area here and then we will put some epoxy here too to make the ship whole again so to speak so yeah i think we're ready to actually try this card and see what else might be broken so i did try the card and the computer didn't post so i put in the postcard and i got error code 13 which is on ami bios uh, pci bus mastering initializing so basically doing pci stuff so i poked around here because i kind of expect stuff like that so i found this corner here is a loose pin this one in the middle seems fine but we're gonna go over it anyway this one is also loose i'm not sure the corner pin actually goes anywhere it could be a wire under here i could shake but we're gonna sort it in anyway this one clearly goes over to here Then uh, I checked uh, all the way around. So this corner too. At least two loose pins there. So we're gonna solder in place. These two I would expect the car to work I think. Uh, a lot of the time. As long as you get uh, it to work. Uh, against the PCI slot. The frame buffer ship here. And the FBI ship, as long as you get the FBI to like be detected, uh, usually the computer posts, but uh, yeah, this card uh, hangs the computer, so I can't get any further. So let's solder this into place and uh, try again. So once I have, I actually can get into Windows and do some testing, we can have a look at any kind of artifacting and stuff we might have. I suspect there might be loose pins on both team user stuff, it's quite common. Also, when you're using like uh, Amtec Flux, clean off the PCI connector uh, down here because uh, the smallest amount you can't even see it uh, will cause similar trouble. So this pin seems to be there now. Can I remove the worst of the flux for now? Like we could go all of them, but right now I'm just interested in getting the card going. If it's if it actually has ships that are working, we no, we don't know for sure. Usually that's not an issue, but you never know. One of the cards I've been playing with is also doing similar thing, but uh, it's the wood one I got. It's uh, it looks mint. Everything checks out, pins everything. Uh, but it also causes no post, but it's worse because the computer says not FF, but it could say FF the postcard or lines it basically like no CPU, but well, the system is working as soon as I take it out, so Yeah, there's something it really screws up the PCI bus. So I think the FBI on the wood one I got is dead Because I've been poking around that car for a day just Checking so everything is like uh, all the stuff is uh, like uh, this uh, resistor array, like everything like that checked out. There's no shorts, uh, like nothing missing, and so on. Like everything checks out so far. I can't find anything uh, visual or measurable outside, like uh, new simple caps and resistors and stuff. So I'm a bit unsure what to do. Because I have no spare T FBI for that card. But anyway, we can now test again, I think. Should just check them over. Not loose. That seems fine. So yeah, these might have come loose when the other side was damaged. I 
on this side was damaged as possible they came loose and uh, the shock of the one got impacted or something. Yeah, so I'm gonna try it again and once I have something that I could post we can look at that. I finally got the system to post. Uh, I still got the code 13 with PCI but it doesn't get stuck there anymore so that's good and I have tested this. Uh, this is my test hard drive. So I tested it with Ubuntu 2 the other day, so drivers were already installed for uh, PCI slot 3, so let's see here, we have something, system info, no, not that one, advanced, Oop. that one, so we got frame buffer for megabyte and texture memory 8 megabytes, and we should also have something in device manager, I figured. And the sound and yeah, with a two, three accelerator. So we have something. And the yeah, sync is off, that's good. 90 megahertz. So let's see if the card actually works. So what I use is one of my own demos I wrote. So yeah, called Steam Engine. And uh, yeah, so I got with the two that just uh, the glide driver uh, renamed to OpenGL32. So we can run this. And the good thing with this one is it doesn't use any. Oh, we got the logo. Uh, but to say it doesn't use any textures at all. So it's just uh, colored polygons. So we're only testing the FBI chip right now. And the fact that it runs is. Nice, it's slow, but it wasn't written for Woody 2s, so it's uh, more written for high poly. Okay, uh, well, the thing is, this use is actually intended for Windows, a uh, window mode, but Woody 2 can't do that, so it's really not intended to run on Woody 2 cards. But I found out that it was a pretty good tool just to test the uh, FBI chip. So, as you can see, we're Artifact free, and if you see some dots down uh, in some places, that's the model, the way I made it, it uh, happens. It's not artifacting from hardware, it's just uh, how the model was created. So. But anyway, that's working, so we seem to have a good working FBI ship. So next, th next thing would be to try something that actually uses the TMUs to make sure they work. Uh, for that we can use like Quake 2 to support both TMUs that I used before and we can also disable one thing that helps figuring out which one is the problematic one if we have an issue I would expect issues there to probably lose pins but we'll check so we run Quake 2 okay let's yeah just want to make sure here it did start uh, Make sure the config file isn't wonky. Got that. I usually delete it because I want to start up fresh. So I know everything is like how the game is supposed to run. So let's uh, try again here. My capture card might not capture the full uh, screen. It has a bit of an issue when you. Uh, it doesn't understand it's a second card. So. Oh well, that worked now. So. And I said 800 by 600 because I want to try test all the frame buffer memory, which 800 by 600 require all the four megs. And surprisingly enough, we have no uh, like rainbow artifacting, which would be an uh, indication of TMU problems, like uh, broken traces or loose pins between TMUs and the uh, RAM. So the VRAM seems to be working, TMU seems to be working, frame buffer working frame buffer memory is working so yeah this is uh, unusual because almost always when you get the FBI working the, the team use have similar issues with broken pins but yeah seems like the damage on the FBI from uh, whatever hit it was the only real damage which is nice can we do a time demo This is running at a Pentium 3 700 at 9.33 right now. If 
59.8. Uh, we can run some other games to make sure. We can run some Quake 3. Oh, so we're off again on the side here. Looks all right. Yeah, let's try some quick one. Where's the config file for there? Just make sure it's not. Let's rename it. I just disconnected uh, the VGA adapter and reinserted it into my capture card. It's uh, why the image somehow gets dark in 640x480, just like I suspected, because it's been acting like that before. Cheap stuff, but it does a very good job of being so cheap. I think I paid like 20 euros or something. So yeah, a quick one is running too, and now we can actually see it. No more darkness, so yeah. It's just my capture card or my adapter for my capture card, it doesn't like it. So yeah, now we can finish up the card I figured. So, let's do that. So, time to finish up the card. So before we do that, I figured have a last look at this the solder here this uh, solder on pin so you can see it's quite a nice blob between the chip and the pin there I found a good angle so it's quite solid so we're gonna cover that up with some conformal coating first then we're gonna epoxy over all of it and the reason we're using epoxy light there it's because the conformal coating is uh, difficult to harden all the way through if you if you uh, get it too thick. Uh, light, the UV light won't go through. So. I'll start with this. So I will leave this on here with the UV light for a little while. I have put a piece of Kapton tape here along the line of the ship so the epoxy will stay in. And uh, somewhere I put something I need now apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mixed up some epoxy here and I got a small needle. I'm just gonna put some in here. That's pretty much it, and uh, let that uh, uh, cure. And then uh, we can remove the tape, and if we want to, we can add some paint, like I use it, like I. Uh, Use uh, like a marker pen and it will look kind of stealthy. Uh, yeah, but the repair is gonna be visible anyway. But uh, this epoxy helps protect it a little bit more too now, so the solid joint is covered. So I have cleaned up the card and I think it came out pretty nice.
So other than the damage on the FBI and a few loose pins and what wasn't much else to fix on it. So here we can see the repair and if you want you can get this conformal coating in different colors on eBay. Blue, like yellow, pretty much every color you can think of. And uh, if you go to Lewis Rossman's uh, webpage, his store, you can find out what it is and you can buy it there or you can buy it on uh, eBay. I picked it up for about uh, 10 euros. So yeah, I think that's worth it. I think with a, with a UV light it would cost you about 13 euros, uh, 13 dollars about. So quite worth it. So uh, thanks again to Sunstingen who donated these cards and other cards. Uh, he also donated this amongst uh, other, um, other Voodoo 2 cards. This is a Voodoo 1. I've been at this card since yesterday and I uh, haven't found any broken resistors, traces, caps, anything. Uh, the card um, makes the board, motherboard, not post at all. There's no postcode even. So I have a suspicion the FBI ship on this one actually is broken. It's just not a simple fix. That's the problem when the cards look like this, basically new. Uh, you have it's hard, you have no like obvious clues to go on, so that's a bit annoying. So I have to try to find an FBI ship for this one, I think, which is gonna be difficult. I, think I have no source for that right now. So anyway, let's put it this in the system and uh, run some 3D Mark. So oh, I got the visitor. <laughs> While repairing the Voodoo 2 card here, it's Kaisa, but he's a male. Don't ask me why he got the wrong name. But yeah, I'm apparently taking care of a parrot today. And he likes my computer too, usually. But he likes to bite off the cables. So. Or steal my tools. Yes, you do. Stealing my tools. So it's on my shoulder now, so it doesn't go up on the disc and steal my stuff because that it tried before. <coughs> so here we are. We have a happy Voodoo 2 doing Voodoo things. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.